Wait, where is Sonic right now? Uh... Is Sonic Underground? Sonic's Underground. He is. So this is see. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Dry Bread Gameplay and Streams, the unofficial Sonic Underground podcast. Okay, I hit the button and it looks like the game crashed. Nope, we're good. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> you have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Bombrek Ak Ghosts. Sorry, this is weird and I gotta like move my head across the whole monitor. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you. But it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings. That doesn't seem grammatically correct. Ere the Yetis get hungry, a new oh, chapter of Dwarves history, Dwarven history, a new chapter of Dwarven history begins here at this place. Oslanisis wind trots strike the earth and build a civilization to stand the test of time. I will have edited that so heavily because I stumbled over every <laughs> fucking sentence. That was really difficult. See, I just hit enter on that, and then it looks like it crashed for a little while before the game loads. There oh, we go. Okay. okay. We thought it crashed for a second, everybody, but we loaded in. I'm going to hit spacebar and just pause right off the bat because everyone was running in a circle, and it was making me worried. So we're oh, looking yeah, at the yeah. game screen now. On the left here, Oof. we can see kind of like our window. You know, we can like arrow key and look around stuff. In the center right, we can see our button commands. And on the far right, is that just a zoomed out part of where we are in the world? Yes, that is showing your entire setting site, your settling site. Okay, so let's just take a second and figure all of this out. Um, when when we were testing earlier today, just to make sure that this graphics pack worked and everything, something that I found immediately interesting was in the very bottom right, there's an H and then there's a bunch of colored numbers that are mostly zero. Now, one is seven, and you can see in the top right we have seven idlers. Are these how many dwarves are working on things? Well, I was trying to figure that out myself because I don't think that's in the um, Oh! My nearest estimate is that it might have to do with the dwarves' moods at the time. Like, kind of oh. like, you know, they're happy. It okay. Might be happy. So I assume you have seven dwarves that are in kind of neutral happiness. Content. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, top right says we have seven idle dwarves, so I guess no one's working right now. And we're just in the middle of what looks to be a field. I know you taught me before that if we hit K, then we mm -hmm. have this little cross here and we can look at things. We can see this is a dense knot grass, and there's some pebbles here. We can see this is a tree trunk because we're on the bottom level. And the, yep. and the triangle bracket, so if we shift and triangle bracket, we can do different elevations. If we zoom out, we can see treetops mm -hmm. and stuff with a bunch of cages in the treetops. I'm guessing that is a weirdness of the tile set? Yes, so probably any graphical tile set you use is going to have eccentricities like that because there are so many different objects in the game that they couldn't possibly individually sprite all of them. Okay, yeah, that's that's something to think about, uh, is that there's going to be weird things. Like, when we loaded up a test file earlier, there was a sleeping speech bubble. And we looked at it, and it was a sapling, which doesn't yeah. look like a sleeping speech bubble. So there's going to be weird things. If you ever don't know what something is, hit K and hover over it and see what the weird thing is. Yes. Like, what is and... this shovel over here? That's a sapling. That's a well, walnut okay, tree but... sapling, not a shovel. Okay. Another, another type of sapling. Yes. Okay. Good yeah, to know. But that goes for the vanilla game, too, if you're not using a tile set, because lots of things are going to be represented by just random symbols and letters, and it's easy to forget what they all are. Yeah. Okay, so we're paused right now. We've just started a fresh file. It looks like we're in the middle of a field or something. We have water nearby with sevens in it, so presumably mm -hmm. it's really deep. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something you taught me before. Yep, uh, so each... Uh, so this happens in vanilla also, but in this tile set, they've conveniently labeled bodies of water with those sevens. Uh, that's because water 
10. Water occupying a single space has a depth between 1 and 7. And 7 being the deepest, meaning if a dwarf is on that uh, tile, they can drown in it. And swimming is not a particularly common skill by the looks of it. Nah, it's not easy to train dwarves to swim when you're in fortress mode. In fairness, they're kind of bottom heavy, low center of gravity, short limbs. <laughs> swimming would probably be pretty hard for a dwarf. Mm -hmm. It's not their favorite. Okay, so I'm seeing a whole lot of things we can do right now. Job list, I'm seeing making burrows. What is a burrow, for instance? Burrows. Well, you've played RimWorld, right? Yes. I love RimWorld. Yep, in RimWorld you can set sort of large-scale zones, like set your home zone, or like an animal grazing zone. And burrows are kind of like that for dwarves, where you're basically designating a large area that they are allowed to occupy in like specific conditions. Okay. Okay, I think I understand that. Well, that's something we probably won't have to do until later, but a burrow could be useful, for example, if you wanted to tell all of the dwarves to stay indoors when there's an invasion. Okay, okay. See, I, I was figuring that a burrow is probably not like Warcraft 3 gets you more supply for orcs. No. Yeah, I figured not. So, we just created a new file and everything. What do you think is the first thing you would normally do when creating a new world and jumping in? Well, aside from just looking around your settling site, uh, which is, you know, always a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the first oh, I can use numpad for this. That's nice. Oh, yeah. I usually use the arrow keys. Oh, there's the river. That's cool. Oh, yeah. So that's where the river is. I'm guessing we don't want to be too far from that, or are they willing to jog pretty far? Yeah, it doesn't matter a whole lot. This is a little different from RimWorld in that it takes a lot less time for one unit to traverse the whole map. Okay. Oh, and uh, you told me this before, but F1 brings you back to where you started if you ever get lost. Yes. Okay. Uh, so go to the bottom of the map real quick. Okay. So we're seeing a lot of stone down here? Yep, so this is because this is sort of a hill on the map. And if you wanted to, you could mine directly into that. But, okay. Um, so sometimes that's a good way to start your fort, is to find a rock surface to dig into like that. But you can also dig directly down into the ground, which is just as good. Okay. Uh, but the first order I would have your dwarves do is to disassemble the wagon that they came in, because it can get you some useful wood. Oh, so, good idea, good idea. Okay, I believe you need to press Q. Okay. This is how you usually uh, do things that pertain to buildings and Remove structures. Remove building X. Yes, press X and it'll disassemble your wagon. Okay, and this whole thing is being removed, okay. So when I unpause, some people will just be assigned to that? Yeah, your carpenter should be the one who immediately goes and starts disassembling the wagon. Okay. Uh, yeah, one person is now not idle, so I guess the carpenter is taking care of that. Okay, so Bret Hart yeah. is dis- oh, oh, it looks like it's disassembled now. I see a pile of wood and stuff. Yeah, all your barrels of booze and things like that. Okay, so if I- oh, not search. Um, yeah, it's so to... plus and minus on the thing to go through. Yeah, okay. Plus and minus on the numpad will let you- scroll through things that are on the ground in a specific tile. Yeah, so wooden splint and willow logs. That must be that there. There's the way... I just hit, uh, hit to enter on this, by the way, to see this. Um, temperature zero uh, Celsius. That's cold. Why is it so cold? Well, this is weird. This information isn't normally in vanilla, I don't think. Ah. They don't normally tell you, like, the density of... <laughs> items or anything like that. Yeah, I don't know how useful that is. Okay, so we're paused again now since I disassembled that. So what should I be doing? Do I need to, like, should I be building a house, basically, for to put our stuff in so it doesn't get rained on? Well, that's not as big of a deal in Dwarf Fortress as it might be in a game like RimWorld. Uh, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to make some temporary stockpiles while you're building. Uh, okay. So you can um, press P. P, yeah. 
and it'll give you a list there of all the different types of stockpiles you can make. Um, stockpiles are 100% customizable, so you can very intricately decide what you do and don't want in any stockpile. Those okay. are just sort of helpful starter templates that you'll use pretty often. Okay, so, so like I can make a wood one right now and they just keep all the wood in there. Right, they would only put wooden logs in that stockpile. Uh, did I just make like a tiny one? Yep, you made it one by two. Ah, uh, so I yeah. get it. Yeah, so it's doing a grid thing like that. Yep, so you press enter one time to start mm -hmm. placing the stockpile and then press enter on another tile where you want the other yeah. corner of it to be. It just fills in there. So you're just doing opposite corners. If I hit done there and then unpause, they are not going to haul the Oh, they are hauling the wood. They just took them a second to realize. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it takes a few seconds for their orders to kick in. Man, they hauled um, that over really fast. Yep. And I, I guess dwarves make... are strong. Oh, yeah. Uh, another few stockpiles might not be a bad idea for the moment. Okay, just um, to keep things organized, I guess? Right. To get a better view of what you have. Like, a okay. food stockpile would probably be good uh, real quick. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's... How big should I be making these? Uh, they don't need to be too big because these are going to be temporary until you will, like start settling underground. Okay. So I did a bar one there as well. Um, finished Probably goods? Probably don't have any bars or blocks at the moment. Oh, how do I remove so, these? Remove press X. X. Yep. And then just trace over that the same way you placed it. Uh, hit enter in one corner. And then oh, get oh, okay. The Sorry, I did that in a dumb yep. way. Okay. Um, but let's see. A finished goods stockpile is a good idea. Okay. That'd be for G. I will do one there. Do we want stone? Um, maybe a small one, but you probably don't have any stone with you. But you'll have a lot once you start burrowing. I figure, yeah, because we got to put it somewhere. Yep. Um, um weapons? Sorry, what? I don't know if you'll have any weapons right now, but a furniture stockpile is a good idea. Furniture. Too. Okay. Where was furniture? Is you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yep. And okay. Yeah, you can probably. I think you can make these all bigger later on if you need to. Yeah, of course. I don't think there's anything else you really need a pile for at the moment. Okay, I'll just let so, them do that real quick, and we can watch them do that. Start moving things over there. Okay. It's oddly satisfying watching them do that. Mm hmm Okay, well, that bottom one got filled up. I should probably make that bigger then. Um, mm -hmm. Was it P? Yeah. And then what kind of stockpile is this down here? Uh, I don't remember which one that was. This so one is thing you can do. rope crutches. This must be finished ah. good stockpile five, it says. Okay. Yep. Why five? Because it was the fifth stockpile that you made. Oh. Okay, there make that bigger okay the furniture right. one is filling up fast as well i didn't think we'd have so much furniture already oh yeah so what is all uh, this furniture um a bag a bag is not furniture neither is a bucket <laughs> fucking idiots step well, ladder um it wouldn't be a bad idea to cut down a few trees so you'll have more wood when you need to make furniture okay so how do i designate a, a tree for cutting well, you'll press D for designations. D for designations. Oh, chop down tree by default is T. Okay. Yep. Well, let's mark off that and that. And I'm guessing yep. our... Oh, did I... Did I do it wrong? No, we're good. We're good. No, I don't know why one correct. of them turned black. I think, yeah, they both turned black. Just one started blinking after yeah. you unpaused. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. Okay, I got you. So Bret Hart's cutting down some trees. Yep. And so it took me a while to figure Whoa, out designations. Oh, that's a lot of wood out of that one. That must have been a tall tree. Mm hmm Okay, okay. so they'll start hauling that. Yeah. So, again, I'm probably going to be drawing a lot of comparisons to RimWorld. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like a lot of people watching this have probably played RimWorld since RimWorld's inspired by this. Right. And I love me some RimWorld. It's how I got partnered on Twitch. <laughs> I've been playing that game forever. Right, so when I was learning Dwarf Fortress, RimWorld was several years away from existing. Yes. So the idea of designations was pretty foreign to me for a while. 
I was used to Age of Empires where you just right click on trees and then people would go start chopping them down. Mm -hmm. But a designation for anybody unfamiliar gives you an area to select and they will perform that job within the area that you select. Yeah. Um, in RimWorld, that would be literally a mining order or a cut down trio order or a cut plant order or something and you drag a box over and everything within that's applicable will get marked off in the queue of things for your people to do. Yep. So Dwarf Fortress works the same way. If you wanted to just cut down one tree, you could make your designation a single tile. And they would just cut down that one tree. You accidentally clicked and it actually did a thing. Uh, I think it was just <laughs> looking at a tile though. Actually, that's useful if I can just click something to look at it. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. That's actually mildly useful, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, okay, see. so we have some stockpiles. We generally understand that mechanic now. We we obviously mm -hmm. need more room for wood, but whatever. Um, right. Should we be building something right away? Well, in Dwarf Fortress, building above ground is a lot more time-consuming than it would be in a game like RimWorld. In Dwarf Fortress, it's a lot more efficient to carve out all of your buildings into the earth. That's kind of what I figured, considering we're dwarves. Oh, yes. <laughs> Our fortress should probably be in the side of a hill or a mountain or something. For the most part, yeah. But you can dig straight down one layer and just have the entrance to your fort be in the middle. And you can always, you know, build walls around the entrance later if you need to. Yeah, so basically making almost like a trap door and a ladder. Something like that, or just How a stairway leading down. How would they carry furniture down that? Well, I don't know about ladders. I don't know that ladders even exist in the game. Okay. Stairways do exist. Okay, so do you think that we should be building, like, just start to mine a hole in the ground right now? Mm-hmm. So okay. you'll need to make a designation... Designation. And stairs can be kind of complicated in this game. It's looking like it. I think what you need in this context is a downstair, which would be J. Uh, a downstair, so J. And I want. And I would make like a three by three downstair is a pretty good idea. Something like that? Yes. Now see when you unpause if the miners go and carve that out. Okay. So it looks like that's uh, yes, they are. Okay. They're working on it. So now, if you go down an elevation layer, and go down one Z level. Uh, whoop. Oh. Uh huh. So now you can see where the stairs appeared, I believe. I. So can... I mean, they... they would be around here, around that mm -hmm. area, but I don't see. Yeah, it, it looks like. It looks like there was a little uh, underground cave there that they dug into. Yeah, with walnut tree roots or roots. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So now see if you can have them carve an up-down stair just directly underneath those downstairs. That is strangely complicated. So that would mm -hmm. be like here, home, yeah. This corner mm -hmm. to there. So if we did it right, they'll be able to carve that out. Oh, it looks like something's going on there. Yeah, yep. they're on it. They're doing something. Okay. They so did whatever now. that was. I don't know what that tile is. That's yeah, a stair. Those are up, Black up sand down up down stairway. Yep. So now that we're past this hurdle, carving out stairs in the future becomes a lot easier. You just need to use an up down stair on every layer below this that you carve out. Okay. Wait, but all stairs are up downstairs truth have you ever in your life seen a stairwell that you can only go up or down no but i have never seen dwarven architecture what the fuck okay <laughs> um okay so well, i'm guessing i use the mine command now yes is that to take out walls yes well let's do we just widen this yeah, it'd be a good idea to dig out some space here, and this would be a good place to put your farmland. Underground? Oh, yes. Remember, the main food source for dwarves is mushrooms. Oh! Which can grow pretty well in caves. Okay. Are they idle up there? Whoa, uh, that was the wrong button. They're not doing anything. Press U real quick. 
Yeah, they have no job, so I don't know why they're not mining that out. Yeah. Planter, farmer, hunter, mason, expedition leader is Bret Hart. Of course he is. This is my <laughs> SummerSlam, or my SummerSlam, my Survivor Series team. Of course he's the leader. The leader of the Hart Foundation. Uh, minor, minor. Huh. Huh. I'm not sure why they're not digging there. That's not a good start. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. I just did a mine order on this layer. Oh, I think I know what it is. Uh, those are tree roots that they can't walk through, so they have to mine through that uh, oh. tree root right next to the stairs. That should do it, I believe. Yep. There, so they're oh, going to carve okay. out those tree roots. Okay, there we go. They're doing their jobs. Yep. And I would have them dig out a pretty big area here. Like, bigger than that. Just like, like one so big room? Yeah, so when you're doing your designations here, you can press... You can hold shift and press the arrow key, and that'll do ten spaces at a time. Right, yeah. Yep. So... That's both a good way to carve out large areas, and it's also a pretty good measuring tool if you lose count of how many tiles wide a yeah. room is. That's a good point. Okay, so we're carving out a big room here to work with. Mm -hmm. And it'd be a good place to put some farmland once they get a pretty good space. Okay. So these guys, is it okay these guys are basically just doing nothing up here right now? Is that going to cause any problems, like they're wasting time? Not at, well, actually, uh, maybe. I would say pause it for a second. Okay. And what we can do is have them build at least a carpenter's workshop up here. Okay, so is that building for B? Yes, and workshops are under their own category, which W. I could be w. Yeah, and then and carpenters is C. Yes, you have to do all of this by hotkey, by the way. Yeah, I'll get used to it. It's fine. No, uh, clicking on menu options for anybody who's not used to that. So here's uh, the cool thing. It'll give you a list of all of the materials you can build that workshop out of. Right now, you just have different types of wood. They don't really make a difference. Okay, so just... Uh, just enter, or...? Yep, if you really wanted to, you could press plus or minus to pick those different types of wood, but I think and... they'll all look exactly the same. All right, uh, the carpenter is getting to work. I saw he's stopping idle, so Brett's working on that. Um, Sonic and wood. Goku are working in the mine. Mm -hmm. And it looks like occasionally someone else over there is hauling some wood. Yep, so I think he's finished the workshop. That was fast. Now. Why yep, does it look like him. shit? <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell that this is a workshop. <laughs> Well, it's a drama you know, symbol and some squares on the ground, and some grass. The drama symbol is odd. I think that's another one of those pile set eccentricities that we're maybe. Be so to have him make things at the carpenter's workshop, you'll press Q. Okay. And you hit A to add a new task. Whoa! I'm guessing beds. Yes, beds are definitely a good first priority to have. You'll want to make at least seven of those because every dwarf that you settled uh, with is going to need a bed. How do I... R for repeat? No. Yep, if you press R for repeat, then he'll make beds forever until you tell him to stop or he runs out of supplies. Okay, so we have seven people, so let's do seven beds. Yep, other than that, you just hit A and then enter for as many times as you want him to do it. Okay, so I'm just done now? Mm -hmm. So as soon as you unpause, then he'll get to work making those beds. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we've got beds being made, and I'm guessing later I need to tell them where to put them. Yes. So okay. let's see how the carving is doing underground. Yeah. Uh, not bad, they're almost done. Wait, where is Sonic right now? Uh... Is Sonic underground? Sonic's underground. He is! So, this is, see, <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to my Dry Bread Gameplay and Streams, the unofficial Sonic Underground podcast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. For anyone who doesn't know, we did a tutorial series on Factorio forever ago, and it just devolved into a Sonic <laughs> Underground podcast. God, it keeps happening. Alright, they're done carving now. Awesome, so you wanted to designate farmland, right? 
Yes, let's make a farm plot. And I believe to do that, you need to use the building menu. Oh, building, okay. So that would be B, and if I remember right, it should be B for farm plot. Uh, is that v? On the list? No, uh, V is, re- is restra- uh, P. P for plot, is that correct? I'm looking for farm plot P, you got it? Yes, okay.